Change Islands, a pair of rocky islands to the west of Fogo. An old place, an important place in its day, a real center for the inshore and the Labrador fishery. The fishery faded for a while and so did Change Islands. It had to, for the sea was its lifeblood. Now it's back again. The men and women of Change Islands once more look to the sea for their livelihood, and they're doing all right. Old and young alike are interested in the fishery. The islands are ringed with traps and nets. The sea is alive with the sounds of outboards and making breaks. It's an inshore fishery now. No one goes to Labrador anymore. Schooners were sold to wealthy Americans or lie rotting on the beach. Change Islands is a solid old place where traditions remain firm. Where women still knit and old men still talk of the days of sail. Where gardens are kept. and where salt fish is still made in the sun. But you can't live on traditions. Money must be made, and it must be made from the sea. And that's just what the people of Change Islands are doing these days. They've taken hold of the fishery. They've stuck with it. They've worked at it. And now they can see it coming back. It's hard to believe that just a few years ago, they all said Change Islands would disappear. Well, not everyone said that. Charlie Watton didn't. And now he's lived to see a touch of prosperity and hope return to the old island. Well, Charlie, about 10 or 15 years ago, uh, it seemed like Change Islands was going to be a ghost oh, yeah. town. Oh, yeah, just about finished. Just about finished. People tried to leave and believed in the world in large numbers. That's where all those empty houses oh, you see around. All houses, you know, and a lot of them is gone out of it altogether, moved out of it. Some of the houses that was here, the people left, it was sold and it's gone over in Deep Bay. What happened? People get discouraged with oh, the fishery? Oh, got discouraged and the fishery was poor. Well, not poor, but the price. Mm. The price of fish. Everything you know, went right down, see. And then there was talk about uh, moving people out to us. Oh, it yes, this uh, resettlement program, see. Yeah. They, that was brought in. Yeah. That was a ruination. That was a ruination. People, uh, some people jumped for that, you know. How did you feel about it at the oh, time? Oh, I didn't take any notice of it. Uh, I didn't tend to move in here. I would be the last man to move. What, people people clung, clung to the island? Oh, yes. There was a few of us, and well, the, what's about here now, clung to it and battled away at it. Got through somehow. And uh, but the others left, and a lot of them left, and went to Toronto. And, one place and other. Well, this last four or five years, a lot of them wish themselves back. And there is a scatter for them moving back. But now it looks good, isn't and it? Now it looks good. And I mean, they not only look good for cod, but uh, for other species of fish as well. You can sell ever anything. Yeah. Everything and anything. Capelin and flatfish and lump roll and herring and all that stuff. Done it all. When I was at it, you couldn't sell nothing on your codfish, and you had to put it under salt. And put in your lifetime, I'm always making, trying to get it made, and all that. Yeah. What about the people who come back now? I mean, can they get into the fishery? I mean, they got Well, uh, on that's what they're hoping to. Yeah. They're hoping to get into the fishery, because there's a hunter coming out last week. And uh, he's going into the fishery. He's going to buy a... A speedboat now and going to fit right out for the fishery. You think the trap fishery now is still strong? Well, uh, it's just coming back. Yeah. It's just coming back.
Lester King. He's been fishing on Change Islands all his life. His son, Francis, returned to the fishing boat a few years back. Now they're at the fishery together. The trap fishery has been the mainstay of the inshore fishery for a long time. When fish stay offshore, it's a useless way to fish. But when the codfish chase the caitlin into the beaches, there's nothing better than the cod trap. These are familiar sights and sounds to thousands of Newfoundlanders. The trap fishery, the mainstay of the inshore fishermen on the northeast coast for a hundred years. An old way of fishing now, and certainly not the most dependable, for it is a fixed piece of fishing gear, and you must wait for the fish instead of chase them. Yet when the fish do strike in, what can be better? What can be easier than having a cod trap in a good berth? There have been countless millions of pounds of codfish caught this way. In a good year, when the fish come in, it's hard to beat it.
But it's one thing to catch the fish, it's another to sell it. For in the trap season, so much fish is caught that the fresh fish plants can't handle it all. Lester and Francis King want to sell fresh, but that depends if the plant at Change Islands can handle it. If everyone had a haul like they did today, well, they'll have trouble getting rid of their catch. Bert White is chairman of the Fisherman's Committee on Change Islands. He's a man who stuck with the fishery through the years and watched it come back. It's a lot better than last year. Last year there was nothing. There was no capelin and, and of course there was no cod. But this year the cod have come, but the, right now there's none of the trap, but we're opening it to well pick up again. Much better sign than last Much year. Much better sign than last year, yeah. Is that what people attribute it to, the, the fact that there's capelin oh, yes. around this year? Yeah, definitely, yeah. The cod was there last year, but it didn't come in from the hopper ground. It's the outside ground, you know. Just, you could jig it, but it didn't come in long and enough to get out of the trap. So most people are not too fussy about the capelin fishery, I suppose. No, really. We think it should be. We think it should be banned. Mm -hmm. Left us primarily as a bait fish, which is we think it should be, you know. But how has the fishery been here in Change Islands over the years? There's been quite a bit of change on Change Islands the past 10 or 15 years, hasn't there? Yeah, quite a bit, yeah. Place is pretty down a yeah, few years ago. Yeah, a few years ago it went right down. There was hardly any trap crews. There's only two or three, I think, as a matter of fact. But it's picking up again now. There's somewhere around, I would say, four, 12, 14 trap crews of approximately 40 traps. So it's, uh, it's looking up again, you know, since the plant has started and prices have gone up. Yes, the fresh fish plant has changed Change Islands. Changed it from its age-old dependence on salt cod. Fish can be sold direct from the boat now. This means fishermen can spend more time on the water. And it's not just codfish the plant is interested in. You can sell just about anything that swims to a fresh fish plant. But perhaps the biggest impact has been the employment that's created. There are jobs ashore now for those who don't want to spend their lives in the fishing boat. This means there can be two or more incomes for a family. It's made quite a difference. But there are problems. Remember the kings and the fine haul of fish they had? Well, they couldn't sell it. The plant is blocked with fish, more than it can handle. A familiar story to fishermen and plant owners alike, how to handle the vast quantities of cod that are landed in the trap season. The last couple of days we were in trouble. You know, we had Monday there, we had over 102,000 pounds. And, you know, we can only lead the last few days, we've been cutting around 35,000 a day. And that's better than what we've been doing, you know. Usually we've done around 25 or something like that. I you suppose know, we, that the lot period is so short that it's hardly worth making major changes. You know, we were we were thinking about putting in another plate freezer. Besides, we got a new one in this year. We only had one last year. We're putting in two, but uh, when we come to figure it out, you know, it's only for two or three weeks. You're going to need this extra freezing power. And this, for seventy thousand dollars for machinery, you know, is is hard to justify, you know. And so the fisherman has no choice. If he can't sell fresh, he must salt his catch. And that's what the kings were doing late that night when we passed by their stage. For the younger generation, this may be something new. For the older men, it was simply a step back to the not-so-distant past. <coughs> Splitting the fish, salting it, going back to the way it was done for generations. But most fishermen don't want to handle their fish this way anymore. The price of salt fish may be slightly better, but look at the work and the fishing time lost. Well, France is a lot, a lot of fish, but there's a lot of work. Yes, it is, yeah. Everybody couldn't sell a fresh. Yeah, I suppose so. Still a few days' time when they get cleared. They got backed up down here. Mm. How long do you think it'll take you to put it away now? Oh, I think we'll be here until 2 o'clock. So they'll be here working in the stage right. till 2 in the morning. It's not the first time, especially for Lester, whose crew once landed and dried 1,100 kentles of shore fish. But at 4 o'clock, they'll be up again and out in the boat. Because when the fish are running, you've got to run too. There's hardly time to sleep.
Yes, summer is harvest time for the trap fishermen. Time to reap the fruits of the sea, the cod, the northern cod that swim to the land after the spawny capelin. The fish that's been the subject of verbal warfare recently. Everybody's been sounding off about the northern cod. The companies, the provincial government, the union, the feds. Well, now it's time for Charlie Watton to have his say. What do you think about all this talk about northern cod now in the Labrador fishery? Oh, the northern cod. That's, that's what we lose note by. That's when we lose note. They're down there all the year round dragging up that that cod and there's no and there's nothing to come to land. Well, these are drainings, I call it. You know, all the trash, that's all comes to land. But the best of the fish is, is dragged up, I see. And they're destroying hundreds and hundreds and thousands of young fish. And they're destroying the spawn. I think now, I don't know, but I think that the, that bank should be closed for January and February. That's the year, that's the month that uh, that, uh, that fish is, is breeding, spawning. Oh, yes, see a few there. It's a hammer, it's a hammer. <laughs> Well, now, here's a fine crew, all determined to get their share of the northern cod. Who says the younger generation isn't interested in the fishery? And it's not just the boys either. This is the Diamond Clan. There's not a harder working crew on Change Islands, or in Newfoundland for that matter. On nice days, they take the kids out. Northern cod. It's northern water, too, when it runs down the back of your neck. Well, it is another fine haul. No one could call us the jinkers on this trip. It's hauls like this that make you think that maybe the cod fishery is beginning to recover on the northeast coast. That maybe the 200 mile limit and the quotas are beginning to work after all. Yeah. 
For years we abandoned this fishery, let it slip through our fingers. Let the foreigners wreak havoc offshore while we tried to become factory workers. Now, maybe, just maybe, it's on the way back. Pretty good price on the same sort of fish, isn't it? Hey, how are you? Pretty good price. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Four or five barrels, is it? Yeah. Well, if, you did, if you did that every time, you do all right, I suppose. Oh, every time? <laughs> yes. Yes, you had every time. The diamonds don't seem to worry too much about whether the plant can take their fish. They salt a lot anyway. They prefer to. And they've got lots of help in the stage and on the flakes. This is a family business if ever there was one. But make no mistake about it. Those who do well at the inshore fishery are not those who fish for a few weeks. It's people like the diamonds who work year round, and when they have to, they'll chase the fish. Well, we started off the spring at the earring. With 20 nits out, gill nits, and in April on. So from that to uh, cod nits, that to the cod trap. Then around the 1st of August, we go off a little fog, a little fog oil. You stay out there, do you? But yeah, we go off Monday and come back Saturday until probably the last of October. I usually go out for a couple of weeks, eh? Out there too for a couple of weeks, but I don't know about this year. I got squids, eh? And it's a job to do that now. And the weather's that bad. It's not not that nice of weather to go. So maybe I'll stay at the squids and forget it for this year. But so you're, you're, the men now, Lou and, and Eric here, work pretty hard at the fishery and so does the whole family. Oh, yes. We don't stop. We're working from what? Six, seven in the morning, maybe 12 in the night, eh? Perhaps later, he just wants to do. Well, the inshore fishery will never die while there are people like the diamonds around. People who are not afraid to work. People who have never really lost faith in the fishery. People who are not ashamed or afraid to continue an old tradition. Do you know who steered me to the diamond family? Two of the old fish killers, the retired schooner captains of Change Islands, Skipper Billy Hoff and Skipper Ray Scammell. I guess the diamonds remind them of the way their generation worked at the fishery, and they're proud of it. But they've got their stories to tell, too, of an earlier time on Change Islands. That will be next week on Land and Sea. Tales of the Days of Sail, with Skipper Ray Scammell, Charlie Watton, and Skipper Billy Hoff. There must have been quite a sight to see all the sailing vessels in the harbor. 
Yes, sir. You can look down there in this tickle, or this cool over here. She had five or six more deer off of her, you know. And then all the tickle down here was lined out. Anchor out in the middle of the tickle, another one ashore, and then there's another cove up here called Riding Cove there. There's always four or five up there. So you started in the days of sail? Well, I started in the days of sail. Yes, sir. Must have been quite a time. Oh, my son. All you wanted was plenty of wind. <laughs> oh, yeah, I went from there with it, brother. Oh, get the wheel tight. <laughs> Take it right out of her. Yeah. Like we used to say it all the time, nothing looked better than a lordly scorn and a lordly box. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes, I almost forgot, our good friend Charlie Watton is getting married next week on Land and Sea. And we're all invited. See you then. <laughs>